Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour Murders at Karlov Manor. It is Top 8 Sunday here in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and we have three of our four semifinalists decided. So we need four. We need four. <laughs> yeah, it would be a good thing to have four players in the top four. I think that would be helpful. Yeah, we better figure it out. Sure would be. Take a look here at the top eight bracket. Minyang Chen on Lotus Field Combo has made it through so far. Seth Manfield will be his opponent on Rakdos Vampire. Simon Nielsen, we just saw absolutely crush it to the semifinals with Boris Heroic. And now he'll face either Alex Friedrichsen or Chris Larson. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be exciting. And you got to love Simon saying, I have no good matchups. <laughs> at the start of the tournament and now going, oh, I actually have all good matchups to the end of the Pro Tour. I'm going to win yeah. easily, basically. He's basically just said, please, no vampires, because yeah. he hasn't gone up against that matchup. So apparently you just have to be Simon Nielsen to be really good at magic. So Great. Lotus Field combo, Amalia combo. Which one is going to combo the fastest? Yeah, we will see here. This matchup is just very close. Both decks can be extremely explosive and combo off uh, really, really fast. And neither player has a ton of interaction for the other. Mm -hmm. uh, we are coming into game two with Christopher Larson up a game, so I guess <laughs> I put the advantage to Chris slightly, but this is really, really a close one. Well, let's get into game number two here. Wow, Maybe is that a multi four? Ooh. Wow, okay. Oh. Okay, sure. That's not great for Christopher Larson, but I guess you need something to go with this uh, Amalia combo. If you don't see Amalia, you're in trouble. Yep. And uh, kept a hand of three land, Fauna Shaman, uh, and then Drew Collected Company. So yeah. a solid draw here. You know, that can still be a very explosive win on turn five type thing, which might not be fast enough for what it's worth. And this Fauna Shaman is a pretty unique inclusion for this team's deck list specifically. Yeah. Because, you know, in their testing, if you don't get Amalia, you're not going to win. Yep. That's basically the, the gist of it. So Fauna Shaman, another way to find the powerful two drop here to mm -hmm. complete the combo. Yeah, I was talking to my buddies, uh, Christopher Larson and Ely Cassis, who mm -hmm. both played this version. And they were just saying, you know what? I wanted this combo Amalia deck to be just 100% streamlined towards yeah. the combo. Not any kind of drawing other cards and hoping they're good enough, setting those stuff like that that we yeah. saw from other players. Just all combo, because they recognize that plan B is just not good. Yeah. yeah. So going right. all plan yeah. A here. <laughs> Christopher Larson yeah. also said to me, take a guess at how many matches of Amalia I played in preparation. I was like, OK, I, I guess 20. Wouldn't yeah. you say that is higher or lower? Uh, I was going to say 30 at least. Yeah, he said 10. He oh. only played 10. He, he was playing a lot of other decks against teammates. Yeah, he teammates. was playing Recto Sacrifice up until. That was his main <laughs> deck. Yeah, he didn't like where it was positioned. <laughs> so he was the enemy playing against other people on the deck. So he was wow. learning vicariously yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then but, just going, OK, yeah. Recto Sacrifice isn't going to get it done. So kudos to him for picking something up and just rocking with it. Exactly. Then he gave me a big hug and picked me up <laughs> in Christopher Larson fashion. As he fashion. does, yes. Yep. <laughs> he, he did that a, a few times yesterday with the rest of the top eight. So. With Seth, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so a big tank here from Alex. Oh, yeah. Big, this... big tank indeed. What's he thinking about? Yeah, I mean, I think I saw Sylvan scrying um, and maybe hidden string, something like that. But... Uh, Usually these first couple turns are very scripted. Yeah. You know, you're not really doing much here. Arboreal Grazer's in hand, so okay. are we doing that So first? it looks like there is Arboreal Grazer, Impulse, and Scrying. So, I mean, okay. those are all three of the options you have. Um, so it definitely warrants a thought. Impulse is going to be the first protocol here for Alex Friedrichsen, it looks like. <laughs> Christopher tapping the land to signify I have F6. <laughs> <laughs> For the newer players in the Magic Probably. community, I mean, those who play on Arena, what is F6? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have. I am passing priority throughout the throughout the rest of this turn. You can do whatever you want. I will do nothing against it. <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right. Grazer time. Yes, Grazer time. Or Boyle Grazer hits the board. There is a Lotus Field, the namesake card of the deck. So two lands in the bin, and uh, fingers crossed for Alex Friedrichs, and then he can basically do his thing this turn. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Larson is a very, very fast player as mm -hmm. well. You know, gets close to that Shota and LSV levels as well. Jeez. And now we'll see, we see Hidden Strings pour over the pages and Impulse and the Sylvan Scrying here. Okay. So is able to Sylvan Scrying 
and go get Thespian stage, but not able to do it. Yeah. If Alex wanted to be really aggressive, could go Hidden Strings on Lotus Field, untap it, Sylvan Scrying, get Thespian stage, and copy it. Yeah. Pass the turn with six mana and go from there. I think that's the option, or just Sylvan Scrying, Thespian stage, go. And I think you can kind of do the Hidden String thing next turn as well, mm -hmm. if you want to kind of net the same amount of mana. So I think this feels like either play is fine, but I think I would lean with just yeah. Sylvan Scrying pass. But it looks like we're going for the more mana efficient play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the the name of the game for this deck is you want to get as much mana as humanly possible. Yeah. And this way will result in Thespian Stage coming down and then the ability Bobby. to copy it, copy Lotus Field, six mana next turn when you untaps. Yep. Okay. Without any other shenanigans. Exactly. <laughs> Ah, the dreaded mana pools. <laughs> Chris pushes those off, be like, not today. <laughs> okay, so getting rid of Selfless Savior, going to get a two drop. Now, there's a lot of, you know, one ofs that you can get that can help, but just going for the namesake card of Amalia, and this is Christopher copying his own Lotus Field, essentially. This is him setting up for the win <laughs> next turn and saying, Alex, you better do it. This very next turn, yeah. Alex is going to be able to start with a pour over the pages, which is exactly what you want to do. Net one mana, draw three cards, discard a card, and uh, see if that one mana can turn into Emergent Ultimatum for the, the W here. So for Christopher Larson's combo, we need an Explore, Life Gain, one of those two to kick things off here, as well as the Wild Growth Walker. So exactly. still quite a lot for him to uh, piece together there. So Alex Friedrichsen looking in the lead here at this point. Yeah, I think both players still do not every have everything wrapped up mm -hmm. at all, you know? So Pour Over the Pages has to find some good here. I saw, I think, a Balageds Recovery mm -hmm. as another card for Alex, so nothing special. Needs to find some goods here. That's an Emergent Ultimatum off the top. And a Vizier <laughs> of Tumbling Sands. I think we might be done here. Yeah, I think uh, game number three coming up real soon. Well, I say real soon. They still have to go through the motions, <laughs> yeah. you know? What if they make a mistake? But at yeah. this level, these players, they're not going to stumble, yeah. at least uh, statistically speaking. And there is the spot where Alex is at such low resources in hand that if we were to see the really common piles of pour over the pages, dark petition, and omniscience, mm -hmm. Um, then you could go with the scenario, give Omniscience and pour over the pages to Alex and hope you brick. So yeah. it's not 100% done now, um, but very much favor to Alex. And I do see Alex is running the uh, combo finish of Chandra, Hope's Beacon, being able yep. to get into an infinite loop with that and Balagid's recovery and just burn Christopher Larson out. So. Yep, still playing the Archdruid's Charm, which all but one player was playing this weekend in the Lotus Field deck, and it just looked incredible. Yeah, this uh, card is insane. Yeah, this is kind of the more traditional uh, Lotus Field deck that does kill with Chandra's Hope's Beacon and Balaged Recovery to uh, just be returning cards, copying it with Chandra, and then dealing five over and over with Chandra. Pew, pew, pew. It's pretty easy there when your does. opponent's at 20, but when your opponent does get to 100 or so, yeah. which Amalia can do. I wonder if we've beaten 138 that we saw earlier in the week. That's a good point, yeah. I'm sure someone out there has. <laughs> Big thanks here again for Alex. Yep. Where is this mana going? What are we floating? So what do we got there? Two black, three blue. There, there is Vizier. Yep. And that is to untap, give us three green, and go from there. And then emerge an ultimatum, have fun. Yep, and one blue floating. We haven't played a land yet, so if Alex does have an untapped land, you'll see some lines where you get Leer as well. Yeah. And if you can put Leer into play, play land three and have that hidden strings in the yard. You can then start pouring over the pages, mm -hmm. stuff like that, get your graveyard online. So one combination we could see here is Leer, Dark Petition, and Omniscience, but nope, looks like we're going for the pour. And yeah. Yeah, Omniscience back. Oh, wow, okay. Oh. So yeah, Chris did have some thought here. You know, could go for putting Dark Petition back and hoping Alex's hand yeah. is bad, or just dark, going for this. Dark Petition just goes and gets Leer, right? And with Spell Mastery, there's some extra mana. Yeah, that's what I would think. So the, mm. But let's see. All right, well, kicking things off with a pour, untap. What did we find in hand? 
And goes a temple. Yeah, temple's no good as that third land. Now dark petition. Can find emergent ultimatum as well mm -hmm. and go again there. <laughs> or a leer if you're feeling that. One more time. Either way, you got options to win this, I would think. Um, but there is, it's a, a, a smaller and smaller fail rate. Yeah, yeah. The more and more we go where Alex takes more game actions. We're just digging through the library here. You know, it, it becomes inevitable after a while. Yeah. It's soaking up camera time, really, you know? Oh, yeah, 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 there you go. Well, there's no time limit in the top <laughs> Exactly. Eight. You know, let them soak up the limelight a little bit. Where to from here, Mr. Friedrichsen? Happen to think about it. So two lands on the board. Would love to find the third just to unlock that mana base even further. A couple yep. more on tappers. Will make them quite happy indeed. And there's omniscience. Just so. finds omniscience. That tells me Alex's hand is good enough. Otherwise, you would not risk getting omniscience. You got to have mm -hmm. it already wrapped up. I guess if you have like three impulses or something, oh, maybe yeah. you try to risk it. But. Now, Omniscience, I will point out for future games, it doesn't matter right now, mm -hmm. but Christopher Larson does have a one of Haywire Might, so there oh, can yeah. be one of these scenarios where you play Omniscience, Alex would p put Impulse on the stack, and Christopher could cord for one, and then blow up Omniscience. Could be a way to break serve on this uh, type of scenario, but with That's Christopher, cool. uh, you know, very hellbent here. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he won't be partaking much more in this game. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Doesn't feel like it. There's also the uh, single copy of Bosaiju who endures. Yep, absolutely. That can always a, be a thing. Omniscience. That can always target a Thespian stage in yeah. response to it targeting Lotus Field as well, which can be relevant. And Sylvan's crying to get Ottawara. Hmm. That's okay. either just doing your game actions to do them or planning for maybe not winning this turn, but Balagad's recovery to get Dark Petition. First. Bouncing Amalia with the uh, Ottawara? Okay. Yeah, maybe. That Bounce that. I would think the plan is still <laughs> to win the game yeah. here. Yeah. Double if you just leave your deck, like, upside down. <laughs> Chris is like, you can just leave it upside down. <laughs> Chris is like, let's get this over with here. I got dinner plans. <laughs> dinner? It's only 1230. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so, emergent ultimatum number two. Chandra pulled to the front. Yeah. Probably going to be Chandra, Lear, Dark Petition number two. Seems like a good pile. Could also... Um, that all feels like bad news for Christopher Larson. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, he knows what's going on. You just kind of sit here and you wait. You're th he's thinking about sideboard plans now. So exactly. So while Alex is going through this, let's talk about Christopher Larson's sideboard. What do you think he's bringing yeah. in? What's he taking out? Yeah, so for Christopher, I would think it all comes down to these one-of cards that end up being very impactful. You could bring in Lauren, the third path, mm -hmm. Tamiyo sa safekeeping, Thought Seizes, Archon of Amiria, uh, Fatal Push, I guess you could consider. If you got nothing else, that probably wouldn't be ideal. You can take out, uh, there's a lot of decent cards to take out as well that don't really have a lot of text. I do love the one single copy of Thrun. <laughs> In yeah. The sideboard. <laughs> yeah. What you doing there, bud? <laughs> I mean, I feel like we've all lost a Thrun enough I have in that lost limited a thrun format. Times. That uh, whatever purpose it does in limited back then, it kind of does the same in, in uh, constructed here. <laughs> oh, okay. We found Arch Druid's Charm, Lear, and Four of the Pages. So as what the that second targets? What okay. that says is no matter what, Lear's in play. Yeah. Because you either get Charm or you get that. So smart choice by Chris there, because well, the Charm does not do too much here um, with Lear already coming onto the stack. You can get yeah, a Vizier, which, get a vizier which is pretty cool. So the one thing Alex does need here is an untapped blue source, and then we should be all wrapped up. There it is. All righty. So there's land number three. Omniscience in place, so everything's free. There goes yep. Vizier. Untapping the land, getting some cards. Lear now unlocks the entirety of the graveyard here yep. for Alex. Right. And Christopher's seen exactly. enough. He's like, okay, cool, you don't need to burn me off. Yep, all that was good. that was really all that needed to be seen was unlocking the graveyard. Now, yeah. Omniscience only makes the stuff you cast you from your hand them. free, but if you have hidden strength, power of the pages, that yeah. kind of stuff, uh, you can really get it going. So we talked about Christopher's uh, sideboarding here. Yeah, what does Alex do? Yeah, so Alex brings in three temporary lockdown, two voyaging satyrs, one unauthorized exit, and mm -hmm. takes out two arboreal grazers, two impulse, one dragonlord jamoka, and one emergent ultimatum, which is kind of surprising. Mm, okay. 
Well, kicking things off here, our Sonoti Scout explores Collector Company into the bin, getting the counter. So, what do we see in hand? Oh, there's a Malia, there's a Tamiyo safekeeping, but and no a Haywire might, but no land, yeah. Oof. Rat row. Maybe a mulligan as well. That looks like only four cards in hand. Seven cards being on the play. Yeah, so mulligan to six as well. Okay, this been staged down on the board alongside the temple. Okay. Sylvan scrying. I wonder what he's going to fetch. You know, I'm going to take a guess and say the namesake card of a Lotus Field. Yeah. Now, I saw Omniscience in hand, and I didn't see a land, but honestly, I could tell there is not a land. Uh, in hand by playing the Thespian stage. That is something to very much look out for when you're playing against Lotus Field. It gives away quite a bit of information because you really want that to be the land after your Lotus Field. But there we go. We're finding the second one anyways. Hmm. Got to mean Alex also has a Lotus Field in hand. Playing. We're playing, says Chris. Land yep. two. Play Lotus. Tap the two lands you're going to sack. Copy Lotus with Thespian stage. Yep. If you just shuffle, it's probably easier. We'll figure it out. All right. Prosperous Innkeeper down on the board now, alongside the other critters. So we have one key to the combo assembled. We need a Malia, we know he's in hand. And then we need the Wild Growth Walker. And you really do need a Malia in play first. It, it always is yeah. the case here in this matchup, but it's especially the case against Lotus, as if you just say go, you have you know a ton of life, you have a giant Amalia in play, but you can't kill Alex. Alex can still easily win the next turn. Enough yeah. Balagad's recovery and Chandra's, you can just go infinite. <laughs> so even though, you know, Christopher could get to 100 or whatever, really? the Chandra can still get it done. That's a pretty terrifying thought. I don't think I've ever actually gotten to the point where I've seen someone go through the motions of the Chandra and the Balagad recovery because yeah. the opponent's just like, that's fine, go. Yeah, all these players <laughs> have been testing against Lotus Field, yeah. and they all know exactly what's going on here. So they know when it's over most of the time, but you have, you almost always make your opponent do it once, oh, yeah. you know, and then kind of go from there. Temporary lockdown in hand, I see. That's pretty brutal. But no way to fire it off this turn. No, definitely doesn't look like it. If, if there's a hidden strings, you could, or if there is a vizier, that might be a vizier in the back, so. It's pretty tempting, but the thing is, is you can play it, and you can still Haywire Might yeah. with the ability on the stack. Yep. Lose the Haywire Might and the treasure, but... So it's not the best here. That land off the top for Chris was very much needed, or this could have been uh, quite the blowout. How does that interaction work? Because temporary lockdown is when it enters, exile each non-land permanent with mana value two or less until it leaves. So until you, it leaves. If you blow it up before with the ability on the stack it's left so then the yep. ability will go off and it will do nothing because it's already gone okay yep some templating works yeah, yeah, a little yeah. different there where it exiles know. regardless skyclave apparition being mm -hmm. the main one <laughs> uh, if you deal with that it still exiles yeah, you don't get your uh, your creature back yep or creature mana value at least so Alex decided to not go for that line since there was mana available. I don't know if there ever will be Ooh. mana available, but yeah, here is that hurts. one of the cards that came in. You know, yeah. the, the main thing, um, it, I mean, both lines attacks are actually pretty good. Yeah. Non-basic lands, your opponent control, enter tap. So if there's a thespian stage, which there is, womp womp. it cannot just copy right away. And only being able to play one spell is completely backbreaking for the combat. Yeah. So. Can you find me the card? Christopher Larson, though, can know, get away with I just playing one spell a turn. If it's a collective company, yeah. you could easily assemble yeah. the combo but here at the end right. step, for example. And Chris is going beat down at this point. This oh, is yeah. six damage. So yeah, at this point, Chris is not even going to try to combo. This is a two turn clock. <laughs> and it's just, look at this. Chris has Tamiyo's safekeeping in, play, yeah. in hand. Like so can protect I mean, Archon. Mm -hmm. Haywire yeah, might yeah. to stop Omniscience or something like that. So Chris is full and truly just going for the beatdown, <laughs> and I don't know if Alex is going to beat it. This is plan B down, right? Yeah. Not plan I, A. I love that Chris is getting <laughs> the Oracle text on his own card here. Oh, yeah. You usually don't see that. <laughs> I think it's in, can't read what that is. Maybe Japanese? Probably yeah, not, not sure. <laughs> Wazir of Tumbling Sands enters the battlefield. There's Thespian Stage, enters Tap, courtesy of Archon Water of Amaria. Oh, 
boy, I think uh, Christopher Larson's looking pretty good here in game number three. In our fourth quarterfinal, three players already through to the semis. We are looking for our fourth in one of these players. And what do you think yep. of this? I mean, Absolutely. So I saw a glimpse at Chris's hand. It is Amalia, Fauna Shaman, and Tamiya safekeeping. So a solid hand here. The Vizier of the Tumbling Sand is pretty good as a card to play here, just mm -hmm. as a blocker. Maybe it affects the two-turn clock. There is Amalia, life gain from the Prosperous Innkeeper, and a land found off the top of the library. Yep. Going to shock it in. Overgrown Tomb. Yep, triggers the Explorer, missing the Wild Growth Walker to trigger yep. all the Explorers. All the Explorers and all the Explodes. Now we're going to see the Vizier jump in the way of this Noti Scout. Yeah, and this uh, Vizier really slows this clock down quite a yeah. bit. So that was a nice play by Alex. So it went down to nine then after this attack. Yeah. Lamps are sorcery speed indeed. So no real risk here. Alex just thinking, is there anything that you could have that could pump this? And there is not. Tamiya safekeeping is just the two life and the indestructible and hexproof. And one spell has already been played, so yeah. nine. Not even yeah, uh, can't, yeah. able to do it. Archon's just like, yep, <laughs> you know exactly what I can do this turn because that card tells me I've done it. I feel like Chris was pretty close to just saying, I've already played a spell, I can't do it. <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, make him sweat. Yep, absolutely. No reprieve. <laughs> so now we'll see um, what Alex can do here. Well, yeah, what's his out in this situation? You know, with. Without knowing about the Tamiyo safekeeping, there's a few things. Ottawara bouncing the Archon would be great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would kind of be the main thing. So you can like Sylvan Scrying for Ottawara and Ottawara in the same turn because only one of those is a spell. But outside of that, there's really not a ton that you can do. And with the Tamiyo safekeeping, I am really not seeing what you can do because you're going to need a card over two turns, you yeah. know? So something like having unauthorized exit, which Alex brought in, to be able to do that on Christopher's turn, and Chris, okay. or and Alex having something to do on his own turn that affects it. Yeah, going for Pour of the Page is digging now. Untapping Lotus Field and Thespian Stage, which hasn't copied Lotus Field yet. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to because, well, Alex can't play any more spells, so not much else to do with his mana. And temporary lockdown, that line you mentioned earlier, Haywire might still able to activate and destroy that before it exiles the critters. Yeah, these are all Court of Calling targets. And speaking of Court, I think I just saw a Court off the top. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when you just draw them naturally, they are still good cards in the matchup. So, uh, you know, really impressive stuff to draw a couple of these silver bullets here for Christopher. Yeah. Court of Calling can be played on Alex's turn. Does he go for it now, though? You know, just to get around the one spell per turn. So Christopher can go for the combo for the win right now. Mm -hmm. Now it's just, if I do that from Christopher's perspective, what happens if Alex has something after the board is exploded yeah. with Amalia? And then what if Alex were to go bounce Amalia with an Ottawara, and now the Archon's not in play, the Haywire Might's not in play? That could be an absolute train wreck. So that's the kind of things Chris is going over in his head, like the risk reward yeah. here. He's asking himself, do I even need to do this? Should I just attack all out two turns in a row and win that way? Or what could you have yeah. when I have Tamiyo's safekeeping and I can protect through it? Yeah, because Alex would need two answers yeah. then to get through that Tamiyo safekeeping. Exactly. So from Christopher's side of things, you know, like statistically speaking, he's in a really good position to just yep. win with the combo. Yep. But, you know, if he's a little concerned then, like you mentioned, the beatdowns mm -hmm. are the way to go. And here's the thing is if you go for this, mm -hmm. you go for the cord and then you start going for the Amalia, uh, Alex can wait till the Amalia is about to hit 20 power and mm -hmm. then deal with it because then it hasn't destroyed the Archon. So Chris can't even cast a spell. Right. So that's the, that's right, the kind right, of right. dilemma here. Oh, yeah. And it looks like these are just coming in there. This is not a cord being turned sideways. I like this play from Chris. I think it's much safer. And I'm trying to piece it together probably exactly like Alex and Chris are, is how does Alex even just get through the Archon with Tamiyo safekeeping in play? Because yeah. you would think this uh, Lotus Field deck, you would be like, well, all I got to do is cast one Emergent Ultimatum. I mean, that card's 
just one powerful spell that ends the game, but the Emergent Ultimatum still casts the other cards, and, you know? Yeah. Even yeah. with the Archon on the board, like, <laughs> both players, they have one shot. <laughs> they yes. can do one whole thing in this turn, so... Yeah. That card really throws a wrench in both of the uh, the game plans, or at least the uh, the typical responses we'd see in this situation. Yep, absolutely. So here we go. These are the blocked. So Amalia's left open. So Chris is kind of back in the tank um, about whether or not to destroy this. If Alex would have just blocked Amalia, you know, I think Chris would just be like, okay, damage, take four. We'll go from there because triggering Amalia would not represent lethal, but this could easily be a kind of a bait block by Alex, just saying like, yeah, go for the Amalia thing if you want to. I have X, Y, or Z, you know? Well, yeah, Alex would have two actions, because we did see the Ottawara in hand, right? I, I'm not sure I saw it, no. Okay, because if there is one in hand, then he Oh, can. yeah, we Sylvan Scry... No, we Sylvan Scrying for Thespian stage, I believe. Yeah, maybe that was in the previous game. Yeah, I I'm, I haven't for sure Let's seen see. it. What's he got there? Temporary lockdown, hidden strings. Alex holding his cards pretty close to the chest there. That's the only two I saw. So we've declared attackers. And blocks we've have been declared. Blocks. So what's that four damage coming through? So down to five, Alex would go if there's no further responses. Yeah, Chris is just debating, do I want to make it four or 20? <laughs> And I think it's too risky. I think I we have perfect information that I yeah. think it would work, for what it's worth. I, I don't remember seeing Ottawa. I don't remember seeing anything else uh, no at Quick Splats. But it is risky. Chris could straight lose this game because he went for it, because he loses the protection from Archon. Yeah. There is the Are one okay? copy of Unauthorized I mean, Exit in the sideboard. I'm not sure if he brought in it multiple in. Multiple cases. Yeah. Looks like uh, okay. Judge has... Uh, Express Christopher to make a play. Mm -hmm. Can I refer to that be both players from Redstone? Absolutely. That's fair. <laughs> yep. Chris making his case that Alex also thought about some stuff. Yeah. Ooh, we're going for the cord. Okay, so okay. the little critters are convoking. We're gonna go and find a wild growth walker. Okay, it looks like it. Hey. Here we go. This is the combination. Amalia, wild growth walker, and a way to gain life. And Alex okay. is just like, all right, no answer I will it. make you do it here. Wow, okay, so plenty of things that could have gone wrong there. It could have been a train wreck situation, potentially, if there was an Ottawara untapped, you know, yeah, yeah. that whole it, thing. But yeah, Christopher Larson went for it and played. was rewarded. That play had its risk for sure. Seven. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was fire shoes along the table oh. saying, wow, how lucky, keeping seven? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. Ooh, yeah. there we go. Our Boreal Grazer turn one with a scry from the Temple of Mystery. So things looking really, really good here so far for Alex. Yep, that's the dream. And we even saw Alex take two of those Boreal Grazers out. So, I mean, why leave all four in when you have one on the play? Good old Arboreal Grazer. Absolutely. This is probably the most seen one drop in the last year or so of coverage, huh? Probably. I thought these <laughs> might uh, have something to say about that. Ah, uh, it's not a one drop. Ah, okay, okay. Count. All right, all right. <laughs> Christopher Larson just kicking things off here with our overgrown tomb. All right, there's already Lotus Field in hand from Alex, so we're definitely already online for getting it going. There is a charm as well in a hidden strings. And maybe a pour. Another blue card on the side. Ooh, Amalia. Yeah, Amalia is definitely the best turn two play. And yeah. Christopher can win on turn three. You go Amalia on two, turn three. Uh, Lunark Veteran plus Wild Growth Walker, and there we go. Yeah, or even the uh, Innkeeper. Yep, Make Innkeeper, the use the treasure and go for that as well. Lotus Field on the board now for Alex. So mana was floated, I believe. Yep, looks like we've got hidden strings. We're gonna untap there. Uh, Net a mana. Did you do blue green on that? You did, yeah. yeah, I okay. did a green turn one. Huh? Yeah, so yeah. he's at 18. Oh, 18, damn. No, no, I'm at, I'm at <laughs> 19. Didn't you? Blue green. You, oh, blue color. Just right 18. Blue, okay. okay. All right, you want Blue colorless, it looks right. like. <laughs> My head. Oh, blue colors. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, blue blue wouldn't make too much sense there. Mm -hmm. Take damage for nothing there. There's no double blue spell. <laughs> I'm trouble and hold you to the green, but it's just not worth it. 
Chris <laughs> <laughs> like, I could hold you to it, but it's not worth it. Yeah. I'm dabbing with Christopher, the Christopher always strings. having fun. <laughs> Using the hidden string there is really aggressive, I must say. Yeah, for what? There, I, it's to play charm here at the end. Yeah. But, you know, you could just be a little more patient. You could always do the hidden string thing next turn. Mm -hmm. But getting Thespian Stage into play right now definitely has its advantages. Yeah. Yeah. And I see Innkeeper, Innkeeper, Wild Growth Walker. It's there. He's got it? It's there. Okay. <laughs> I was like, is that a hand yeah. extension? What are you doing, Christopher? <laughs> I was like, that's, uh, that's a little aggressive if he's saying, I got it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're, so just, we're just shuffling. I saw... Um, I saw Plains, I saw Innkeeper, I mm -hmm. saw Wild Growth Walker, everyone. So that is the combination here for Chris. All right. And this is the type of battlefield where he just goes for it. Yeah. Because you Alex gotta. could copy this and win next turn. You got to go for it. This is do or die time now. Let's see if Christopher Larson can lock this up and be our fourth semifinalist here. Wild Growth Walker, Trigger. And this could be, oh, I think I saw unauthorized exit there from Alex. That will do it. Oh. As far as breaking this up, I would think. Now there's the arch. Oh, oh if there's the archer, it's charm. It can fight the. Yes, it can, it can bite the prosperous innkeeper. Yeah, so sorry, Alex bite. actually has two ways to break this up right now. Uh -huh. Can either use the charm for that or, which I would think I would like better, is just let Amalia destroy the battlefield, mm -hmm. and then after it's a giant powered creature, unauthorized exit it, yeah. and then you just have more stuff off the battlefield. If you deal with this innkeeper, and Chris has another innkeeper, which he does, yep, yep. then it's that is, alert. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, this Ooh, is the correct play from okay, Alex. Okay. Let it happen. Sweet. All right, so Chris is going to be feeling pretty good right now as we uh, start our explore. And, uh, you know, this is going to take a while as you got to get up to that 20 power. Yeah. But this will, the end result will be Amalia will be a 2020. Yeah. Chris will scry the card that he likes onto the top. And then the no, wild growth, or the arboreal grazer, the innkeeper, the wild growth walker will all be dead. Mm -hmm. And then Alex is going to lose three life, put Amalia back to Christopher's hand, and Christopher will be at 50, 60, 70, oh, 80 ish life. Geez. One, two, but there's the three. reservoir on top. Ooh, okay. So now it one, doesn't, kind of doesn't, doesn't really matter. matter. Yeah. yeah. Now Alex is going to have to kind of win the game Nine. next turn. Otherwise, reservoir okay. just comes into play. 11. Chris will have more than 50 life. Yeah. Gets to activate that Virgin. and uh, aim it right upstairs. Goodness me. Just a big old reservoir slash cannon. Yeah. yeah. So now, now it's just reservoir on top, 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 top. Plus. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. I like that. It's splitting out the land and non land. Told they will make 18 together. Because I'll leave this on top. 18 together. Plus 2. Plus. So 24. 23. 24 plus 1. Yep. Doing the math here. We'll listen along with Christopher. Yeah. And I think this might be one step closer this will make to an all Danish side on the oh, semifinals. Oh, oh, oh. They, they're buddies. They'd be playing each yeah. other. Wow. I mean, you'd be pretty happy either way with that result, I think. Oh, yeah. They're definitely. That guarantees a Dane in the finals. Yeah. <laughs> Not too shabby, Denmark. I guess you can go to. So I'll take happy. This one's bigger. So 18. 24 plus 1. So 24 times 3. 72. 72 to 73 plus 20, 93. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to play Amalia, you better be good at, you know, some, oh. some good math problems yeah. here. Yes. Oh, man. And there's the unauthorized exit, so that's going to get rid of Amalia. Yep. Oh, oh the wrong person's got 93 life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would make this a little trickier. Oh, boy. Yeah. Sure, yeah. 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 That's not yeah. good. But right. yes, it is uh, uh, Christopher Larson. 93. On oh, 93. Yep. And how much? 216. And Alex should be at around 16. Oh, Either way, it's not 50. I'll tell you that. That's the only no, life total that matters. Yeah. And now Alex has to win right now. Yeah. Even that Besaidu is not going to be enough because you play the reservoir and then just activate it yeah. right away. Just charm, just hidden strings. This quarterfinals is over. That's not going to get him. That's not going to get it done. I want to see the explosion. Oh, wait. You can Besaidu. You could have besaged you the land. Is it a four what? shuffle? That player you, may you search. May, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. But, I mean, you still would kind of want to. Actually, because Alex, had, mana. Alex had to use that Besaidu to destroy a land, and Christopher then wouldn't be able to win exactly next turn. Yeah, because it's a four mana card, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's rough. And there it is. That's going to be just 50 damage oh, upstairs. Oh, my goodness me. Talk about an explosion here for Christopher Larson in this quarterfinals. Alex Friedrichsen doesn't have an answer. There's the handshake. And Christopher Larson is through to the semifinals. Congratulations to him. Wow. That was really awesome stuff. And yeah, Alex had to besage you the land. Yeah. But even with that, you know, Alex's play would have been besage you the land. At most, you could hit in strings untap and then Besaidu and then Thespian stage the land. Yeah. But then after that, with only the charm in hand, there was no one card that Alex could have drawn to not just die the very next turn. So not even over the pages, nothing like that. I guess you could pour, 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 pour. And some yeah, of those kind of, uh, you know, absurd draws. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that was the only way that Alex would not lose that very turn. Unbelievable stuff there. Christopher Larson, congratulations. Riley Knight got to interview him after his win. So let's go hear from him now. Christopher Larson winning his quarterfinal and heading into the semis. Christopher, congr congratulations. Uh, let's talk about the deck that you've brought to the top eight. You're the only person playing Amalia combo. How do you feel it stacks up against the rest of the people in the top eight? For the top eight, I think it's really good. It has a fine Phoenix matchup. I have not played against the Vampire's deck that is advancing as well, but Lotus Field is probably the best matchup I can face. And having that in the quarters was, let's say, fortunate. Okay, all right, let's move on now and talk about your semi-final matchup against uh, Simon Nilsson, friend and countryman of yours. Is this also a matchup that you think you're favoured in? I think I'm a little disadvantaged, mostly because he's on the play. But uh, here's the thing, we can go on for the rest of the day. We might have multiple draws coming into this uh, match. I actually got, I got the chance to catch up with Simon about this behind the scenes. Uh, it's because he can buff your Amalia in response to one of the Explore triggers? Yeah, he can make my Amalia go infinite. Like, if it's on 19 and you buff it for 2, it goes to 21. And then it just goes jiggling all the time because it doesn't kill my combo. And then we just shuffle up and go again. So it actually forces a draw because it, neither the Wild Growth Walker or the uh, Amalia trigger are a May combo. Is that something you're worried about in this match? No. Okay. I'm worried about. I don't think you've been worried about anything ever in your entire life, Christopher. No, not in this hole, at least. Is this all great? Well, mate, I'm so pleased that you're doing so well. Can't wait to see the semi final, which could be very, very interesting. So stick around and make sure you get across that one. Christopher, the very best of luck to you in the semis and for the rest of the top eight. Thank you very much, man. Prepare for a possibly infinite semi finals after the news desk sets us up for those.